This story is just too ironic and juicy to ignore. Brussels faces fight over minimum wage pledge in the EU. Resistance from members worried that collective bargaining deals will be undermined. That's right. The European Union is seeking to implement a minimum wage to guarantee a living standard for all people across all member states. Lo and behold, though, some of the more bigoted far right states in the EU are rejecting this minimum wage proposal. And guess who it is? None other than the far right Scandinavian countries that are actually social democracies that Bernie has referred to as socialist. That's right. The Nordic countries famed for their far left democratic socialism that Bernie Sanders has praised as the real American dream is rejecting a minimum wage, saying it is bad. Because I, you, you may not have known this. These countries don't have minimum, minimum wages. Let's read this. And I want to show you, actually, it's only somewhat hypocritical. Let me just not, not bury the lead. You see, first of all, Bernie Sanders has called Denmark socialist and they say, stop doing that. Bernie Sanders says, American dream is in Denmark. Interesting. Well, Bernie Sanders is also for a $15 minimum, minimum, uh, minimum wage. And actually, it all makes sense because Bernie Sanders last year wasn't paying that. So I'm, I'm, I'm being somewhat facetious, but it does actually line up with what Bernie's actually done and not what he says. He can talk all day and night about a living wage, but then when it comes to praising Denmark, he actually agrees. I'm not going to pay my staff. I'm, 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 I know, I know I'm being a dick. Bernie ended up paying them what they asked for. But let's read this story, which I think is, is just so, uh, so, so ironic that of all of the nations to reject this, it's actually the Nordic countries. From the Financial Times, they say, Brussels is facing a battle over plans to introduce a uh, minimum wage across the EU as Nordic nations warn that the measure could undermine their longstanding systems of collective bargaining between employers and employees. Now, let me stop you right there. You see, the thing is, I've been very critical of the, the $15 uh, living wage that has been proposed. I don't think it makes sense. The real issue is the value of low skill labor, not how much we pay for it. And it trickles up. Yet when I say that, they accuse me of being right wing. They say it's far right. Hold on. Hold on. I thought the Scandinavian countries were far left. Well, they don't have minimum wages. OK, Ursula von der Leyen, the new European Commission president, pledged in July to introduce a framework for minimum wages in the EU while respecting differences between individual labor markets as part of her pitch to win support in the European Parliament. But officials and politicians in countries where wage setting deals between unions and employers are commonplace have warned against the introduction of an EU standard under Jobs Commissioner Nicholas Schmidt, fearing damage to their own systems. But if you say the exact same thing here, they will call you far right. This is really funny. On my Wikipedia, they say, somebody from Politico wrote, Tim Pool's opinions on social media bias and immigration often align with conservatives. How is that relevant to my biography? You see what they do? They use it as a smear because in reality, my opinion on social media bias actually aligns with the left wing website Gizmodo, who I use as a, as a citation. And my opinion on immigration actually uh, 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 is more so to Bernie Sanders, who voted in favor of border security and barriers who claimed that open borders was a Koch brothers far right proposal and who only a few months ago said, my God, there are so many poor people, we can't let all of them in. But lo and behold, here we are. You will be called right wing for supporting social Democrats in Scandinavian countries. Harumph, I say. Harumph, I say to the media and whatever twisted ideology they're promoting, I have no idea. Bernie Sanders praises Denmark all day and night saying that's the American dream. OK, all right. I propose we implement some of these policies from Denmark, including getting rid of the minimum wage. Uh Oh, that's a right wing libertarian position in America. You see how this problem is? Let's read a little bit more. They say officials and politicians in country where wage setting deals between unions and employers are commonplace have warned against the introduction of an EU standard under jobs commissioner. Nicholas. Oh, I read that already. Pete Hummelgaard, the Danish employment minister, said that while he had received assurances from Mr. Schmidt, that the commission had no desire to undermine collective bargaining under which bosses and employee representatives hammer out deals and salaries uh, and other working conditions. We are not calmed before we see the final details in print. We are worried a directive will not contain the necessary exemptions or safeguards for our system. 
The basic principle in the Danish model is that we have no political meddling. So apparently, the unions are arguing for the left-wing position of no minimum wage. How does that make sense? Well, ask Bernie Sanders. EU policymakers want wages to converge at higher levels across the block, given wide disparities in salaries, especially between Western nations and newer members in the East. The debate over minimum wages was given a push this year when Franz Timmermans, the commissioner who was unsuccessfully campaigning to be a commission president, called for each EU member state to have a minimum wage equivalent to 60% of the median salary in the country. Okay, I'm going to explain this for people to understand, and then we're going to talk about Bernie, and, and we're going to talk about, and I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to be you know mean to Bernie, but I got to point this out, right? Okay, here's the thing. There is a benefit to a minimum wage. It can level all of these disparate economies across the EU faster than just lettering, letting things kind of even out. The cost of living, while it varies ridiculously, and so a lot of people are fleeing Eastern countries you know, in, in the EU towards Western EU countries like the UK, and it's causing the UK undue stress because they, they have a better economy. The general idea is that you can normalize it by making sure that even people in these Eastern areas, you know, of, of the EU are getting the same wage so they won't have, there won't be this net domestic migration through the European Union. However, the general problem is all you're going to do is dramatically increase inflation. And I'm sorry, but I don't think the value of a Polish worker will change just because of a minimum wage. Now, the EU is going to leave, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Britain, is, uh, the UK is leaving the EU. But you look at places like Germany, where they do pay better, have a better economy. All that's going to happen is the low skilled work is, is it's, it's going to become more expensive and it's going to cause a rapid increase to the cost of everything because the lowest level of labor is what is, is what you have to spend for the, the lowest tier of products, which then escalate as skill levels increase. Long story short, all this will do, it won't level the playing field. It will just cause Germans to say, I deserve double the wage because I got to pay double the money for the widget ma- made in Poland or wherever. Bernie Sanders, American dream in Denmark. This is a story from 2016. They say, open a newspaper on any given day here in this small Europe nation, European nation known for high taxes, generous government services, and it's stubbornly happy citizens, and you'll almost certainly find a story about the U.S. presidential election. The Danes are following the race with an astounding level of enthusiasm and interest in part because Bernie Sanders, one of the leading candidates for the Democratic nomination, won't stop talking about them. Sanders has proudly adopted the label of a democratic socialist, and he has pointed to Denmark as a model of his vision for an ideal American future. Well, surprise, surprise, they're the ones who don't want a minimum wage. And of course, I I must point this out. You know, it was uh, a year before Denmark's prime minister says Bernie Sanders is wrong to call his country socialist. Yes, because Denmark has a market economy, a welfare state, but no minimum wage. How does that work? go back to the the Financial Times and see what's going on. They say, quote, the number of people in employment in the EU is at a record high, but many working people still struggle to make ends meet and can even find themselves slipping into poverty. It's essential that workers have a fair wage that provides for a decent standard of living. Now, here's my main issue with this, right? I've, I've touted many times the benefits of a minimum wage. A lot of people argue, but I'll tell you this, everybody who complains about me talking about economics, I get 50 emails from people saying the economy is bad, 50 saying the economy is good, 50 saying I'm absolutely right, 50 saying I'm absolutely wrong. I don't care, man. I'm just going to read this and talk about it. That's all I can really do, okay? Get mad. I don't know. Blame on the Financial Times. Here's the thing. Just because, uh, uh, hold on, let, 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 I'll put it this way. The way the left operates in terms of politics is for the most part, surface level. They don't think about what comes next. You got to think about this like a chess game, right? They say people can't afford to buy milk. They should get paid more money. Okay. Do you realize that there is an individual human being who milks the cow, okay, or prepares the milk to be shipped? If you think the average person can't afford milk and you take, so, so let's, let's, let's isolate this system. You have an employee who bottles milk, He can only afford to buy two gallons of milk per month. Heavens, they say he should be able to buy four. So you say, okay, we're going to force the company that pays you to increase the cost uh, of your labor. Now he's getting paid twice as much so he can afford twice as much milk. But guess what? He's the guy who makes, who, who packages, who bottles the milk and prepares it. So now the company that makes the milk says, we're paying you double. We got to increase the cost of milk. Guess what? He can still only buy two gallons of milk. The general idea they're proposing would sort of normalize the economy of Europe. What they're really trying to do is force like, 
you know, Poland, for instance, where a lot of people are, are leaving to like Germany and the UK for more money, for better paying jobs. They want to force those wages up to balance out. You know what that means? It means the economy of other places must go down. Listen, if right now people in the UK are at this standard of living, of living and Poland is here and people are going from Poland to the UK and it's hurting, you know, the UK, they say, how about we just normalize it? That means basic costs in the UK are going to go up because they bring in products from other countries, from other EU member states. And the general living standard of these poor areas will also go up, but a net drop, uh, the average will stay the same. But you're going to drive up the lowest skill tier of labor. Now, I know there's immediately going to be 50,000 people on the left saying, and 50,000 people on the right saying, I, I don't know, whatever, man. There was a lot of concern when we did the Na- when, we, when we did NAFTA. I was talking to some people in Canada about this, and I asked them about how, you know, it used to be, not, it wasn't really NAFTA that, that, that did this immediately, but it did start happening where it used to be like one US dollar was like seven Canadian dollars, and now it's like basically normalized. And I had, I asked my Canadian friends about this, like, how do you feel? Is it better now? And they said, it's worse. Americans would come to Canada and they would spend money like crazy because like, you know, an American dollars with seven and a cheeseburger was cheaper. So they would give big tips and it would help the Canadians pay for their local goods. Imports were always more expensive. Like you want to order a magazine from the US, it costs more, but the cost of your rent was normalized for Canada. Now that, that, now that the numbers have, have become similar, people in the service industry were complaining Americans don't tip as well anymore, they don't spend as much, so they actually, it actually became harder to pay their rent. That's what happens with normalization. You know, I'll tell you this. Economics is wildly complicated. A lot of people think we're about to see a big crash. I don't know. But uh, let's read a little bit more about what they're saying here with the Nordic countries. They say this. Only six of the EU's 28 member states, Denmark, Finland, Sweden, Austria, Italy, and Cyprus, do not have a legal minimum wage. The minimum monthly levels in other countries range from less than 500 euro in Bulgaria and Romania to more than 2,000 in Luxembourg. A handful of European countries, among them Nordic states with high pay levels, are heavily reliant on collective bargaining systems under which the state plays a minimal role. Carl Peter Torwaldsen, the president of the Swedish Trade Union Confederation, said his country had fought off attempts to impose a minimum wage and did not want a new battle over the topic. He questioned how easy it would be to frame a minimum wage directive that gave exemptions to countries such as Sweden, where 91% of workers are in collective agreement. I don't, I don't see how your collective bargaining plays a role in this at all. I really, really don't. If, if you're getting paid higher and your, your jet, your average salary is above where they want to put it, it shouldn't impact you for the most part at all. Unless they're really concerned that there's going to be, I don't know, burger flippers. And now the costs are going to go up for everybody. Look, man, I'll tell you my big problem with the left and their minimum wage. For one, you can't call it a left or right wing position when left wing countries in Europe reject it. Okay, plain and simple. If Bernie's going to call Denmark Democratic Socialists and they refuse this, well, then it must be a left wing position, right? More importantly, these policies about the government forcing increase of wages or, or taxing and everything are based on 100 or 200 year old systems and ideas, not taking into account how the economy actually works. It's one of the reasons I like Andrew Yang, because he's talking about automation. I don't necessarily think the freedom dividend idea will work out. We'll see. I think I, I like that he's talking about it. But listen, you look at Bernie, you look at AOC, you look at these other progressives and they're like the Green New Deal. You know, we want we want the New Deal. It's like that was 100 years ago, man. 100 years ago. I don't care if you think it worked or it didn't work. It was 100 years ago. We didn't have cell phones. We didn't have the internet. We didn't have a digitized stock market. Okay, things are dramatically different. And not only that, people can easily snap their fingers and transfer wealth across state lines. I mean, like, I mean, like country lines, right? So we've got co- companies easily operating in Ireland and in and, and, and the Bahamas and Panama when they're doing business primarily in the US. The, the communications technology is rapidly globalizing the planet. You, you can come out and say, we're going to impose heavy taxes. We're going to c- increase wages. And I tell you what, the first thing they'll do is they'll say, we'll headquarter, you'll, we'll, we'll run our company out of China if you're going to jack up the costs. And they'll give us a sweet deal. The competition between nations is very, very different. But you know what I will say? How about the first thing we do is we stop spending money in the Middle East? Okay. All of these things, in my opinion, are stamp collecting. We should increase the minimum wage. No, we should fix the infrastructure because we're wasting money overseas. All right. But you know what? I won't make this video a rant about war again. I will just keep it to this. All right. I don't know what's left or right anymore. No one seems to. Okay. 
They, they, if, if you believe in some weird ideological intersectional BS, you're left wing, I guess. Moderate Democrats who agree with like public health care are right wing now. Tulsi, who's a progressive who is for gun control against nuclear energy and wants a $15 minimum wage is called a Republican because she's trying to reach an olive, uh, olive branch. Like ser- seriously, nothing makes sense. This story doesn't make sense. I have no idea what's happening anymore. Bernie Sanders is a socialist, apparently, and he wants the policy of a nation with no minimum wage while simultaneously arguing for it and then not paying his employees until a big press stink happens. So you know what? I hate everybody. Everything's nonsense. I have no idea what's happening. There you go. Welcome to uh, 2020, and I hope you have a good time voting for whoever you you, uh, end up voting for. But uh, yeah, I will end with one final thought, though. One, One final thought, though. The economy is better than ever. Taco Bell apparently is now paying six figures. Uh, That's what Business Insider reported. Some uh, corporate stores uh, paid benefits to employees. Some stores are doing four-day work weeks. Hours are being cut while pay is being increased. All of these things leftists like Bernie asked for, and it's being done through the free market. So I'll tell you this right now. It doesn't mean the free market always works. I do believe we need regulation to stop, you know, corruption and things like that. But more importantly, aside from anything, is that technology changes how the system works. And, and uh, Andrew Yang made a really good point when he said, who wants to use Bing? Okay, we want to break up these big tech companies that make sense, but nobody's using Bing, right? Google is the product, is the service we want to use. So we have to figure out how to adequately apply new policy to make sure everyone has a fair shake at resources when technology has rapidly transformed how we live, how we consume, and how business functions. Right now, the big problem I see with the left is trying to impose 100-year-old policy on companies with 21st century technology. They can just up and leave and there is nothing you can do about it. They don't have to operate here anymore. So much of the economy is becoming digital. We're not selling jars of mayonnaise. We're selling virtual mayonnaise stickers for your silly little mobile game. And they can do that anywhere. Keep that in mind as you, as you, you read about minimum wage policy and law. You have to consider this too. If the cost to operate a business in the U.S. is higher than it is to operate in, say, India or China, these companies will do it. Now, Trump has put, uh, you know, the trade war. We've had tariffs on certain products. Trump is stopping hard goods. This has worked in a lot of ways. A lot of people are now bragging about how America's economy is better than China and we're, 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 we're tackling them, but they are stealing IP. And this is a big part of the trade war. When it comes to digital economies, these can be done anywhere. And that's where I think Yang comes in hopefully with a more forward thinking approach to how we deal with this stuff. But you look at video game companies. They have no reason to operate in a country with a high minimum wage. They want to maximize profits. They will go to the crappiest crap hole where they can pay people nothing and you can't do anything because it's a digital product. Charge a tariff. They don't care. They don't have to ship anything. Okay. So you can charge a tax because the game was produced in a different country. Fine. But they don't care. It's still a digital download. So it's like, whatever, people will pay for it. Cars are different. 20% 20% tariffs are different, but people will buy smaller products and games and digital products. A lot of these, these, these games that you get, you download on Instagram, they're being run out of Russia where people, or, or Romania. I know I, I, I've, I've had meetings with tech investors who are like, our developers are all based in these foreign countries because there's nothing you can do to stop it. The code isn't shipped. It's just emailed instantly. They don't have to worry about anything having to do with taxes, tariffs, and so they can pay cheap. They don't got to worry about costs. And that's what you need to consider here. When the world globalizes, like so many of these leftists want, I hope you realize your standard of living will drop dramatically. Now, here's the thing. A lot of these people have a low standard of living already. They live in squats, you know, things like that. However, as much as they might be freegans who dumpster dive, preaching about open borders, they don't seem to realize just how wealthy they truly are. Yeah, that bagel shop that threw out, you know, seven dozen fresh bagels because it was the end of the day and they don't want to keep them and you got to eat that. That's due to the wealth of America, our access to energy. And when the whole world starts normalizing due to, you know, digital technologies, don't be surprised when the bagel shop doesn't have those bagels anymore. And now you're left wondering why it is you can't dumpster dive anymore. What's that? You have a squat? Well, now the landlords actually have to rent out those 10 by 10 squares to the average person who needs a job because the economy does worse. Expect it. This is what Trump is fighting when he's trying to strengthen the borders and putting in these, in these tariffs in place. But I think it's fair to point out Yang is looking at more, Yang is looking towards the future. Trump is looking at the present and the past. And I think it's fair to say Trump has done a decent job. The economy, or, or a great job, the economy is doing really, really well. 
But I think we have to look towards the long term, how things are rapidly changing. That's what Yang is getting at. So I don't think Bernie has the answers. And I think it's proven by the fact that he touts the benefits of this democratic socialist system that they deny is even socialist. And Bernie himself wouldn't even pay a $15 minimum wage to his employees. He told them to work less. And Denmark doesn't even have a minimum wage. Doesn't make sense, does it? So I'm not saying, you know, Bernie is completely bad and wrong on everything. I'm saying from Bernie to Trump, okay, they are looking to the past. Trump is tackling trade and borders and it's working. Bernie agreed with Trump in 2016 on a lot of those issues. But now Bernie wants to nationalize and socialize a lot of of these things, increasing costs for companies. And a lot of these companies can leave. Keep that in mind. So I don't know. I think that's why there was an overlap between Trump and Bernie supporters, because because Trump is stopping a lot of these companies from leaving to bring them back. I'll leave it there. Stick around. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. YouTube.com slash Timcast. It is my flagship channel. We're going to be talking about, I think, Ricky Gervais and the Democrats. So I'll see you all there.